Lethen has two fair dice, each in the shape of a regular tetrahedron. The four faces of each dice are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, respectively. Part A. She throws one of the dice 20 times, and a score on each throw is defined as the number of number appearing on the face in contact with the table. Let X denote the number of throws resulting in a score of 4. So part I. We want to write down the distribution of X. So, in part I, the distribution of X, well, this is a binomial distribution because when we roll the dice, it either appears, results in a score of 4, or it doesn't result in a score of 4. So, X is distributed binomially. N is the number of times we roll the dice, which is 20. And P is the probability of obtaining a success, so the probability of obtaining a 4, which is 0 0.25. In this question, you are going to just get one mark, standalone statement mark, for the statement of that distribution that x is distributed binomially. Part 2. We want to determine the probability that x lies, x is greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 9. So, probability 3 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 9. Well, the way we calculate this is that we are going to do the probability that x is less than or equal to 9 from our tables. And we are going to subtract the probability that x is less than 3, so less than or equal to 2. So now we can have a look in our tables and get our readings. From my tables, I'm looking to deal with a case of n equals to 20. So we can see that n equals to 20 is down a little bit further in my table. And the probability of success equals 0 0.25, so this column here. If I just scroll down a little bit so we can completely see the case where n equals 20 and focus on that. The column that I am interested in is this column here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly highlight it by drawing a red line just to the right of it so that I don't go past it. Remember, you're likely to just use a piece of paper or a ruler to line up and make sure that you don't use the incorrect column and go too far or stop too short. I need to first find the probability that x is less than or equal to 9. So looking down the case where x equals, we can see that x less than or equal to 9 is just here. So again, just to help us see how we're taking this reading, I'm going to draw across just underneath it. And so we can see that the value that we need for x less than or equal to 9 is 0 0.9861. I then also need to do the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So x less than or equal to 2 is up the top here. So again, I'm just going to rule across through the row below just so you can see clearly what that is, the value that we're going to be selecting and reading from this table. So you can see here it's 0 0.0913. Our readings from the table indicate that for probability x less than or equal to 9, we get a probability of 0 0.9861. And then we are going to subtract the probability x is less than or equal to 2, which is minus 0 0.0913. When I work this through on my calculator, I get a probability of 0 0.8948. Okay, how do we get the marks on this question? Well, if we have a look on this question, we must, uh, we first of all, get a statement mark, two statement marks for indicating, actually, it's with the values here, so let's adjust that. Statement mark for indicating the correct readings from the table in terms of this subtraction. And then we get one standalone statement mark for getting a probability of 
Part 3. Without the use of the tables, calculate probability x is equal to 6. So this is why I recommend whenever you get any question for either binomial or Poisson that says find the probability of x equal to something, you just keep practicing using the formula because there are specific questions like this one which tell you to do it without the use of the table. So the binomial formula, NCR, so n is 20. We are choosing r, which is six items. So this will tell us how many different ways, how many different orders we can actually get six successes when we have 20 rolls. We then multiply this by the probability of success to the power of num the number of successes, which is six, times by the probability of a failure, which is 0.75, times the probability to the power of the number of failures, so 14. Remember that these two probabilities will add up to one as a back check, and these two powers will add up to the number of trials as a back check. When I put this into my calculator, we get an answer of 0.169 to three decimal places. How do we get the marks in this question? Well, first of all, we get a method mark for a correct demonstration of substituting the, form, the values into the correct formula for the binomial and then we get one accuracy mark if we can then follow that up with an accurate answer of 0.169. Let's look at part B. Part B says that she now throws the two dice simultaneously 160 times and her score on each throw is defined as the sum of the numbers on the two faces in contact with the table. Use the Poisson approximation to determine the probability that the number of throws resulting in a score of 8 is first of all equal to 12 and then between 6 and 4 both inclusive. Both inclusive. So what we're doing here is first of all she throws the two dice. So initially if you remember the question it said that she had two fair dice in the first part A, she was only throwing one of the dice, now in part B she's throwing two dice and she wants to do a Poisson approximation for finding the probability of 8. So in part B, the probability that a score of 8 is obtained is 0.25 squared which is 0.0625. Okay, so this is our probability of success. N, the number of times that we're rolling the dice, is 160. So, if we took Y as being the number of successes, number of successes, Y would be distributed binomially with N equal to 160 and P equal to 0 0.0625. This is then approximated using the, the Poisson approx uh, distribution with a mean of NP. So 160 times 0.0625. So Y is distributed with a Poisson mean of 10. Okay, so remember it's important at the beginning that we need to actually define our distribution to make it clear what we are intending to doing. There's method marks going to be awarded for this, as you're going to see in a moment. Let's answer the first part. Probability that y is equal to 12. So again, as I said a moment ago, just take the opportunity to practice using the Poisson formula. So it starts off with e to the power of minus the average, so minus mu which is minus 10, multiplied by the average which is 10, to the power of the number of successes which is 12, all over the number of successes which is 12 factorial. We can then put this into a calculator and we can evaluate this on our calculator as an answer of 0. 0.948 to four decimal places. 
Now let's look at how we get the method marks in this question. So initially, for this initial work here, and all of it will contribute, but the ultimate statement is that we have this Poisson distribution of 10, we get a standalone statement mark. Secondly, for demonstrating how we substitute and calculate the probability, probability using the Poisson formula, I get one method mark. And then this is followed up with one accuracy mark for correctly calculating the probability. Okay, so part two wants us to find the probability that y is between 6 and 14 inclusively. So y line between 6 and 14. Just like the binomial, this is going to be calculated with the uh, probability of y being less than or equal to 14. And then we are going to subtract the probability that x is actually less than 6. So in terms of the table, that means sorry, y less than 6, so y less than or equal to 5. We can now use our Poisson tables to take readings for both of these probabilities. Now in our question, we are looking to find the probabilities for Poisson mean of 10. So looking across the top, we can find that here is my Poisson mean of 10. So I'm just going to rule down the outside here so that we can see what column I'm working with so I don't make any silly mistakes and go too far. And now what I want to do is I want to find the probability that y is less than or equal to 14. So if we look over here, this is round about where y is equal to 14. So I'm just going to rule across. Remember that when you're doing this ruling across, you'll be using just a piece of paper or a ruler so you're not making any permanent marks, just so you can take your reading and so you can see the probability y is less than or equal to 14 is 0.9165. Now we need to find the probability that y is less than or equal to 5. So looking down again down the side to find where y is less than or equal to 5, just going to roll across so you can see my reading. So coming across, just carefully coming across, you then find the probability that y is less than or equal to 5 is equal to 0 0.671. Having got our reading from the tables, we can see that now what we're calculating is that we are doing 0 0.6. 9165 minus 0.0671. This is then going to be equal to 0.8475. Okay, I hope that, uh, let's have a quick look then at the method marks in this question. First of all, again, just like with the binomial tables, let's make sure we put it in the right place. What we're talking about is we're going to get standalone statement marks for indicating these two probabilities, so two there, and then we get a final standalone statement mark if we get the correct overall probability at the end. Okay, so I hope that all made sense and that you were able to understand it.